Welcome to Olympic Weightlifting and Physics by John D. Kennedy, Nashville State Community College ROTP program. A little history of weightlifting. From the time humans were on this earth, you know, picking up stones, babies, weapons, animals, uh, carrying things for distance, uh, became part of what separated us from other animals uh, in this earth. Uh, warfaring communities like the ancient Greeks and the Romans, they trained their bodies to be strong for battle. Uh, they would do this by picking up logs and rocks and stones and picking them up and putting them over their head. That became just a part of life and training. The Scottish manhood rights, um, proving that you were a man, was to have a communal rock that each, upon a certain birthday, uh, men would pick this rock up and try and throw it, uh, and that was to prove they were men. Even present day in, in Europe, uh, Scotland, Spain, Germany, and a couple other countries um, still have uh, rights of manhood that involve picking up and putting heavy weight over their head uh, with rocks. Uh, near the turn of the last century, uh, you started to see a rise of strong men. They would travel in circuses and other shows uh, around the countries and world, um, showing off feats of strength, bending nails and bars and uh, placing super heavy objects over their head with one arm or even two. As the world became a, a smaller place, as people started communicating easier together, uh, wiretaps, uh, phones, those sort of things, you started having worldwide championships where countries would derive pride from having the strongest men uh, picking up weights over their head. Eventually, the Olympic sports were uh, brought back. And even the first one, Olympic weightlifting, the idea of taking a weight from the ground and placing it over your head was included amongst the chosen sports. Speaking of the Olympics, uh, 1896 was the first year the Olympics were brought back uh, since ancient Greek times. And like I said, weightlifting was involved in, in the 1896 Games, the 1900 Games, and 1904. When the Olympics were brought back again, revived in 1920, it was included as well. Around 1920, uh, the pressure of the Olympic Committee, the International Weightlifting Federation was born. This federation, uh, its purpose is to govern the rules around the sport, um, in each country in the world. Uh, what is Olympic lifting? Well, these are two pictures of some of the two uh, choices of lifts. Uh, to the left, uh, we see a woman. She's doing what's called the snatch. And that is where you pick a weight from the ground, catch it overhead, and stand up with it in one movement. On the right, you see the clean, which is half of the clean and the jerk. Similar to the snatch, you pull the ground away from the ground off and catch it, but instead of catching it overhead, you catch it on your collarbone. Then you stand up and then again press that weight above your head. This is the progression for the snatch. Um, starting at the left, you'll see at the top left here, uh, you'll see the, the lady, Lydia uh, Valentine, pulling the weight off the ground. As the weight passes her knees, her body shifts forward, changing her center of gravity. And we'll get to center of gravity in just a few minutes. Her body continues to contract, trying to drive the weight up in the air. She pulls herself underneath the bar, catching it, and then stands up with the weight overhead. This is the progression for the clean and jerk. As you see, it's two different movements. The clean begins like the snatch, pulling the weight from the ground. As it passes the knees, the body shifts forward, changing the center of gravity. He leans back, again, altering that center of gravity, driving that weight up as he pulls himself underneath the bar. Then he stands up and then presses it above his head. So how does physics apply to Olympic weightlifting? Well, there are many different ways, but three of the main ways are looking at how Newtonian physics are used, how the manipulation of center of gravity is used, and how the calculations of work performed. 
and Newtonian laws. The first law of motion states that an object at rest will stay at rest until acted upon by an unbalanced force. A lifter attempting to move a barbell from the ground has to exert enough force to overcome gravity, which is at 9.8 meters per second squared. That's a considerable amount of force that has to be applied. As the bar begins to creep upward, it continues to accelerate as the person's muscles continue to contract, adding to the acceleration. The lifter initiates this lift, though, by using Newton's third law. For every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. So the lifter is going to push all his force through his feet into the ground. By driving his body into the ground, the opposite happens and the bar is lifted off of the ground. Which then leads us to Newton's second law. The acceleration of an object depends on two variables. The net force acting upon the object and the mass of the object or an equation F net equals MA. As the mass of the barbell, the weight of the barbell increases, it's going to take more force to lift that weight into the air. And the object of the sport is how much weight can you pick up from the ground overhead. So this plays an important role. Center of gravity. If the center of gravity is off, as in this picture, you, the lift itself will be missed. As you can see, he is uh, way off balance and falls forward into his knees. Looking at this video here, this is Ilya Ilyin, currently one of the world record holders. This is a world record attempt um, at 242 kilograms of lifting it off the ground. And this will show you the importance of the center of gravity. Watch closely. Uh, it's in slow motion. As you see his body changing and moving, kind of like a tightrope walker, uh, using the pole to change his center of gravity so he stays on balance. Pretty impressive. As you see, when the weight of the barbell is heavier than the lifter, the center of gravity is going to pull towards that barbell. So by manipulating, uh, instead of trying to pull the barbell towards the body, the, the lifter is going to manipulate his body around the barbell, in other words, to get it up. Work. Work equals force times the displacement times the cosine angle of theta. An example of this, if you had a 50 kilogram bar, and it must be moved 2.15 meters to catch the bar in a standing position, the math of this is about 490 newtons of force must be applied, and it takes about 1,053 joules of work to complete this. Now as the barbell gets heavier, the lifter is gonna to try to reduce the amount of work that must be used in order to catch this barbell. So there are three positions a lifter can catch a barbell in. There's the standing position, there's the power position, which is a small, uh, kind of a slight squat position. And then as you saw in the video, there's the squat position. In example two, using the same bar into a power position, as you see, it's only two meters instead of 2.15 meters which reduces the amount of total work to 980 joules 
versus 1,053 for a full standing catch. And as you see the, in the video, the squat position is the preferred position for lifting the most maximum amount of weight because it's less distance to lift it at 1.8 meters. It only requires 882 joules of work versus the 1,053 for catching it standing. So when using super heavy weights, uh, a lifter is going to catch it in the squat position, whether it's a snatch or a cling. Some interesting world records for you. There are several different weight classes. Um, the 56 kilogram is the entry uh, level, and these are world records for men. Um, they snatch uh, the most a 56 kilogram person has, has snatched is 139 kilograms. Clean and jerk is 171 kilograms. That is over three times his body weight. Think about that. Three times your body weight lifted up from the ground above your head. That's incredibly impressive. 85 kilogram snatch, you have 187 kilograms, and clean and jerk is 218 kilograms. And the heaviest weight class, which is 105 plus kilograms of body weight, um, the heaviest snatch is 214 kilograms and the heaviest clean and jerk is 264 kilograms. So you're looking well over 500 pounds picking up from the ground and placing it over your head. I myself, is a, I'm a certified USA weightlifting coach. Um, this is one of the sports I enjoy the most, both participating in and coaching in. Um, the just amazing what you can see the smallest person be able to generate enough force to move so much weight over their head. It's an inspiring sight, uh, not only for those who are watching, but for those who are lifting. Thank you for watching this presentation, and uh, next time Olympics are on, I urge you to watch Olympic weightlifting.